guys, how's it going? Studman coming back at you once again, and today I'm going to be talking to you about three items. Three items that I picked up from Amazon recently. I got uh, another little gift card from them for putting links in my articles that I write, you know what I mean? And I also, just to be completely clear, I also put links down in the, uh, the section below here, the... Uh, the description here to everything that I pick up basically just so that you know what it looks like what the price usually is for it and if you want it you can maybe put it on your wish list I don't care whatever uh, uh, but I do put links there and sometimes I do actually receive a kickback when you purchase items through those links but regardless of how I'm getting that kickback I'm getting a kickback every now and then. Lately, it's not as big as it has been in the past. But I ain't complaining because I get free stuff every now and then as a result. And I like free stuff. Today is one of those cases where I got some free stuff from Amazon. I don't even think I'm going to go over the pricing on these because, well, they were all pretty much free to me. Uh, in total, I think for all of them, I paid about a buck and some change out of pocket. The rest came off of a gift card, so pretty cool stuff. But the first two I'm going to show you, I will tell you right now, we're actually in the $5 to $6 price range. So, I'm telling you that if you want them, you should probably go and get them now, because I know at least one of them, I don't know if it's going to go out of print, but it's, uh, it's going down in price by a significant amount to the point where you might want to grab it while you can. You might want to grab it, you know, just while it's at a really good price. So anyways, that first one would be... It came from outer space, which of course, yes, is also the impetus for the title of this video. <laughs> uh, this, for those who don't know, includes both the 3D and the 2D version of the movie. So if you have a 3D player, you can watch this in 3D, you know, fabulous 3D. Bonus features, it includes the universe according to Universal, an original documentary on It Came From Outer Space, feature commentary with film historian Tom Weaver, and of course, the theatrical version in 2 and 3D. So that's pretty cool stuff. I have heard from my friends that this is something I definitely need to check out. Brandon Skinslip, told me when he got this that I really need to get it because it's a really good movie, or at least it's a fun movie according to him. And I do like me some cheesy sci-fi from the 50s, those B movies from the 50s. This very much feels like it's exactly that. And I've never seen it before. I mean, it's somewhat of a classic and I've never seen it before, so gotta gotta fix that and for the price that it was at hell yeah damn good deal and hey i got it for free so that's even better price Woo! uh it doesn't come with any digital copy codes just the disc everybody just the disc but on the disc of course you get the 2d and the 3d version so that's pretty nice um this came out i want to say like a year ago it's a fairly new release so for it to be going down in price by as much as it as it is right now uh, yeah I don't know what that means per se but it's the kind of weird thing you don't see every day that makes you think something might be up whatever the case is I am glad to have this in my collection now love me some cheesy 50s sci-fi B movies and following somewhat kind of sort of in theme, except not at all. <laughs> it, it kind of, it's not the same theme, but it's kind of the same kind of movie where it's maybe not sci-fi, but you've got, a, you've got the action elements, you've got the adventure elements and, all, and, and the suspense and the thriller and all that stuff, you know. That uh, very much is what... The Towering Inferno was built upon, the, the kind of film that it was built upon. Of course, this is a disaster flick, first and foremost, I believe at least. I've never actually seen this one, another one I haven't seen, another one that was recommended to me by my good friend Skinslip. 
So upon his recommendation, I decided to get it, especially since the price was so dang good. Uh, let's see, our excitement reaches new heights in this Blu-ray release of The Towering Inferno, which is packed with hours of explosive extras. Holy crap! I'm not even going to read these all off to you. Look at, like, the tiny text here. Those are all the special features. And let me just take a real quick look here. None of these are, like, 16 by 9 widescreen format. No, none of that. It's... All of these are legit special features. That's crazy. Includes 33 extended and deleted scenes, 9 featurettes, 6 storyboard comparisons, still galleries, promotional materials, and more. Paul Newman, Steve McQueen, William Holden, and Faye Dunaway blaze a trail of action and suspense in this 1974 Oscar-winning escape adventure about a sky-high building that turns into the ultimate fire trap when the faulty wiring ignites a raging inferno below. Ah, yeah, it's definitely a disaster film uh, that I've never seen from that same era and type as The Poseidon Adventure, which I absolutely loved. So it only makes sense if I love The Poseidon Adventure, I'm probably going to enjoy this as well. I don't know for sure, but I have a good feeling, especially since John Williams did the music. John Williams, he's a great musician. I love all of his work with Steven Spielberg and, you know, most of his work elsewhere as well. So, yeah, I have no doubt. And I look on the cover here. One of the greatest disaster pictures ever. Yes. It's a disaster film. I don't know why I even had that. Wait, is it? I said that and somebody read this at that same time and was like, yes. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you guys. Uh, feeling kind of loopy. Been well, maybe it's all this moving I've been doing. Moving, I've been doing. And believe it or not, it doesn't look like I've done anything right. But you'll notice a few differences up here. And if you were to be able to see over there, there's like nothing there anymore. There was before. I mean, it's getting kind of interesting. But anyways, I am very interested in checking this out and seeing what it's actually like, seeing if it's any good, seeing if it's near the same kind of quality as Poseidon Adventure was, if I'm going to like it as much as I did Poseidon Adventure, I don't know, but we shall see, I expect good things, I'm at least very happy to have paid such a good price for a, a Blu-ray release that has so many freaking special features, that's, that's pretty cool on its own. Last but not least, and this one I will admit doesn't really have anything to do with the theme, but it is at long last that I can finally confirm and tell you beyond a shadow of doubt that I've correctly purchased and received the right version of a movie that I have been trying to get and having mistake here and mistake there every single time I try to get it for months now. And finally it is in my possession, and like I said, I only paid a buck and some change to get all these. So you know I got a good price on it, and that would be Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan Director's Cut. Yes, it is the correct version, I'll show you right now. The disc is blue, like I was mentioning in the last video, the FYE one. The disc is blue! It's blue! This is what the disc looks like! It looks like this! Um, <laughs> that, that was me getting a little out of control. But yes, the disc, if you'll notice, actually does say Director's Cut on it. So there's no way to make a mistake there. Director's Cut? Director's Cut. How, how do you make that? I don't know. Also, got the yellow barcode, so it's the correct version. Yeah! Hey, damn, Skippy. Very, very, very happy to finally have gotten the right version of this movie. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you, movie gods. Um, I don't know what else to say, except I'm just so happy because this is, without a doubt, my favorite Star Trek movie. Even all the other ones that I've seen, like the newer ones that have come out from J.J. Abrams. 
I enjoy them, but I think this one takes the cake. This one is the best of them all. So, yeah. I, I know, unlike a lot of people who hated the second one because I was trying too hard to be like this one, I actually kind of liked the homage they were paying to the to this movie in Into the Darkness. I don't see why so many people were upset about it. I guess it's just a case of, I would assume, mostly diehard loyal fans who do not want you to rewrite history or, you know, they do not want you to touch their sacred cow, if you will. I, I don't know exactly what the case is there, but whatever it is, I'm very glad to have this, and you'll know I don't actually own Into Darkness because I have yet to find the compendium version for a decent price. That would be the version that has all the special features you know, which is what they should have done to freaking begin with with the original release. But then they went ahead and did the exact same thing, made the same freaking mistake with St Star Trek Beyond or whatever that gets called. <sighs> so, <laughs> any version of that that you may have is going to depreciate in value because eventually they're going to do a compendium version of that one as well. And that one will fetch a hefty price while well, all the other versions are going to drop in price to next to nothing i mean look what look look at the look at how valuable the regular versions of into darkness are now just just go ahead and take a look online just go ahead so yeah it's not looking good for that like it doesn't make any sense why would you devalue your own product by putting so many different versions of it out there with so many different uh, special features spread across so many different discs making people if they want everything go out and buy the movie several times over just to get everything or wait until the coveted movie version of the game of the year edition comes out you know what I mean like that's very much what it is the equivalent of getting a game of the year edition for a, for, for a video game you know what I mean so that's annoying to me because it's like, why should... It's a movie. It's not a video game. Why should we have to wait for you to decide whether or not you're going to fucking do what you should have done to begin with and then buy it afterward? Why do we have to wait? You know, just because George Lucas is an asshole and won't release the original versions of Star Wars doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be an asshole about the way you release your fucking movies. You're not him. Star Trek is not Star Wars. Even the most die-hard of Star Trek fans is going to be able to easily admit that much. So yeah. Whatever the case is with that, I, I don't even know. But what I do know, what I do, what I can tell you is that this movie uh, this particular version of the movie is the one you want to get, not just because it's a director's cut, but because it has a nice new transfer, which is just wonderful that they managed to finally get a new transfer for at least one of the original Star Trek movies. Now we have to sit and wonder why they didn't do it with any of the other Star Trek movies when they keep re-releasing the same sets over and over and over again on Blu-ray with all the Star Trek movies and they're all horrible because they're all the same transfer it's the same shitty transfer that nobody likes because it's blurry and disgusting and they fucked up the transfer years ago and they won't fix it they fixed this but they won't fix that ah. it's Paramount right? Paramount, they're a mixed bag guys and the reason they're a mixed bag is because, uh, you know, if you look at their financial financial troubles as of late, it hasn't been good for them. Um, I'll just put it that way. It has not been very good for Paramount. Uh, they have been trying to figure out how they want to approach that and figure out how they, they how they can start earning more money again instead instead of bleeding money like they have been lately. Lately, they've been a bit of a lost leader for Viacom, and even Viacom is starting to treat them as something where they can use this to promote their products. Their plan right now for Viacom, if you haven't read into this, is 
to use it to promote products across all their other networks. So they want to make an MTV-based movie based on something related to MTV. They want to make four movies tied to four different properties on Nickelodeon, which includes, of course, the Hey Arnold movie that we've heard about. It includes an untitled Spongebob movie that's coming out in 2019, I think. It includes... Oh, what's the other one I'm thinking of? I can't remember what the other one is. But there's another one that it includes that I can't recall what it exactly it is because I don't even think it's necessarily tied to any uh, one franchise. And I'm pretty sure, actually, that the last one, the fourth one that they, they're talking about that they haven't actually come out and said anything about yet is probably going to be a reboot of Ninja Turtles. Because even though we're not, even though the Ninja Turtles series that's currently going on and started in 2012 is ending this year, next year they're starting off with an entirely new series of Ninja Turtles. So they're really trying to reinvigorate that franchise, which is already still very popular for them, one of the most popular franchises out there. So if they're trying to reinvigorate that franchise, Something tells me that fourth movie that they're planning to do is going to be a Ninja Turtles movie. But I don't know. Whatever they decide to do with that, uh, that's basically the approach that they're taking now. Is like When I say a loss leader, I mean they don't care if Paramount is making money or releasing things properly or this or that or yada yada yada. They don't own Paramount so that they can make money off of it. They own Paramount so that they can advertise other products which will make them money. You know what I mean? If they advertise Spongebob and then say, Hey kids, you can watch this all the time on Nickelodeon. Get your parents to go buy Nickelodeon. Go get a cable subscription if they don't already have one. The same thing with Ninja Turtles or MTV. Uh, they're, they're also putting some... They, they got Spike TV, right? They own Spike TV and they're rebranding it to the Paramount Network or something like that, I think. It's the Paramount Network. And they're planning on creating a bunch of, like, big Walking Dead style in terms of, like, how good they're supposed to be, how true to life. You know, after The Walking Dead came out, there was a whole bunch of more like the Bates Motel show that came out. And a lot of the shows were trying to do that whole style of like gritty, realistic stories, if you will. And I think that's the approach they're trying to take now is they're trying to do that same kind of thing, put a lot of money into TV, sh into these new TV shows. And from what I understand, they're also going to be doing some movies attached to that so that they can say, hey, kids, or hey, adults, here are some uh, stories that we've came up with that we're, we're currently showing on this TV show over here. Here's the movie. Go watch the TV show now. Go pay us to watch your TV show now. You know, that's their approach with it, I think. That's how they approach Paramount at this stage in the game. It's not necessarily as something to make money off of, but something to help them promote everything else that they own. So... Paramount's probably not going to go anywhere, but the way that they do movies is going to change entirely. The way they release movies physically is probably going to stay, actually, the same way it has been for a while now, which is a mixed bag. You don't know what you're going to get. Because, quite frankly, they don't give a fuck. They don't give a flying fuck. Alright? Because they're not in it to make money. They're in it to advertise. And they don't care if their advertisement looks very, very, very good or very, very good. So, if it just looks okay but not great, it still gets the message across, doesn't it? Or at least that's their thought process, I think. So, we'll have to wait and see what happens when it comes to Star Trek movies. Getting that, them getting a release of if you ask me, I don't think we're ever going to get new transfers of the Star Trek movies. At least not as long as Viacom owns it. 
And even though it's not earning them any money, in fact, they're losing money because of Paramount, somehow I get the feeling, just given how they've stranglehold on to how they're strangleholding on to Paramount right now, like, no, we are not letting you go. We won't sell you to anyone else. You're ours. That's that's very much their approach. If you go on like Variety and read about everything that's happened over the last year or two, like every time somebody was predicting Paramount's going to be sold, it's like, no, we refuse to sell it. No. Like, okay, calm the fuck down, Viacom. I don't even. <laughs> You're not doing anything. Yes, we are. You just don't get it. Well, I get it. It's just useless. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, I have rambled and ranted for far too long now uh, for three Blu-rays. Just three that I picked up here. But hey, they're pretty good ones. This one, holy cow, it's about freaking time that I finally got this. And I got the right version and everything, yellow uh, barcode and everything. Uh, and then these two... You got some cheesy sci-fi B-movie action from the 50s. And then you've got some cheesy disaster movie from the 70s. Did I say this was from the 70s? This is from the 50s. This is from the 70s. I don't remember what, what, I, what I said for this one. But it was 50s. 50s, 70s. 50s, 70s. 50s, 70s. 50s, 70s. Some of those were right. So anyways, that'll do it for me, you guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. And see you in the new place next time. Peace.